friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I wanted to go over with you guys a typical homeschool day for us. Today was a pretty stress-free day. It was our first day back from Christmas, so we were getting back in the swing of things. So this morning, we're just taking care of breakfast and getting that out of the way before we start start our morning time. And I'll go over what that looks like for us, but I'll also go over some healthy habits that we have in our home to help make our day run a little bit smoother. We have this cabinet out here in our garage and I just recently uh, went through and reorganized everything, just using things that we have. Um, you see, they don't quite keep it tidy, but uh, it works. And so I have all of our kids, um, they can keep track of their own items um, in their own section. I say, get out your books. They come out here and get it. And this is my pile here, all of the teacher stuff. So that way I can keep that um, in a area that's easily accessible. Um, and then everything, they're able to just come out here and grab. Um, we have this out in our garage because it's just a little bit easier to keep out of sight, out of mind um, during any other time that we don't need it. And then my two-year-old can't just get into the cabinet and get colored pencils or paper or uh, markers. So this seems to work well for us. So right now we are going over the very first thing of the day, which is also the most important thing for us, which is devotions and prayer. At this moment, we are reading Let's Just Laugh at That for Kids by Steve Backlund, and it goes over different lies that we typically believe over ourselves and life, and then it also goes through scripture and truth that we can believe and speak instead of those things. Have you ever looked at nature really closely? I mean, really looked? God is a big God. Uh, Matthew 10.30 says, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. This is the homeschool planner that I am currently using. I just got a simple one off of Amazon. It's working pretty well for uh, our planning and scheduling right now. We're also going through Beautiful Feet Books, Ancient History. We're really enjoying that. We just started Ancient Egypt today. And um, that first book that I showed, we're going through that one. And it's very interesting to go alongside the Bible and read the scripture, as well as actually looking at the history and science behind it. Um, so that's been really fun. We've been enjoying it. We really like to all sit down at the table. It's personally my favorite part of the day. And this is actually something that was the first priority for me. I wanted to make sure that we had together time and my kids, they love this time. Right now they're just coloring and we're going through our books and um, the Beautiful Feet books have it laid out really well um, to where all I have to do is look at it, read the pages that I need to do. Um, we can kind of watch videos and things like that. So it's pretty fun. Um, they enjoy having discussions and I enjoy having discussions with each other and it, it really makes it feel that we're not just parting ways, going into our schoolwork and meeting back. We can really have a good discussion about everything that we're learning. After we read uh, the books um, that I laid out before you guys, we do narration and there's a lot of resources out there and maybe I'll do a separate video of how you narrate. Um, but basically it's just telling back what they read. And so it's learning to write paragraphs. It's learning to write stories. It's working on memorization and 
all these beautiful things is tied to our together time, um, what we read. Um, and then it's also tied to language arts. And so we don't have to pull out a separate curriculum for that. It's all tied into this, uh, these moments that we held together. And then we can read each other's accounts of what we read and we can read each other's um, paragraphs or for some of them today, it was two pages for each of my kids because they really enjoyed what we uh, learned and they paid attention this day. And so we are able to all uh, listen to each other's accounts of what we've read, which is a, a beautiful thing. I've seen so much growth in my girls since we've had this approach, which is more of a Charlotte Mason approach. There's so many homeschooling methods and ideas available out there and a lot of them are so great but i want to encourage you to look at your family what works for you what is your hope and your dream for your family do you have a vision for your homeschool and for your family if you don't i would encourage you to create one Think about the things that make you and your children thrive. What are the, some of the things that you guys enjoy doing together? For us, one of those big things is togetherness. And togetherness is one of my visions that I have for our homeschool and for our family. And so it's one of the most important things that I wanna make sure that we get each day. Once you find out what your vision or your goals are for your family and your homeschool, you'll be able to take that and say no to things that may not make sense for your family and yes to the things that will enrich and meet those goals and those dreams and that vision. Where are most of his treasures now? We said Egyptian Museum, y'all got that correct. And y'all got the last one correct, which was true. So right now we're just mapping out different areas of ancient Egypt. Um, so we have this uh, big old map and so the whole time we're studying ancient history we're going to go through and we're going to map out those different areas that we learned. So right now we're just looking at a map in our book and then putting that placement on our gigantic map. And so it's really interesting to look back and look at where things are in relation to other things that we learned. So I like to keep a calendar on our fridge for my family to see all the dates that we have and things going on in the month. So right now I'm just updating January. Okay, it's about one o'clock and I am just now getting to making my bed, but making my bed every day is something that I like to make sure that I do. Um, it doesn't happen every single day because life, but I'm not one of those people who can't get into a bed um, if it's not made, um, I am perfectly okay getting into an unmade bed. I just like how it makes everything look cleaner. Um, I used to be for years someone who did not make their bed. Like I wanted that habit, but I just did not make that habit. So I am in a place in life where I have finally prioritized that. And that was a big deal for me because I wanted to do it for years, but I just never did it. And so this is an encouragement to you, just do it. So this took me maybe three minutes and I laugh at myself because I wanted this habit for years, but I just put it off and now that I finally do it, I'm like, what took me so long? So this is an encouragement to you. If there are some things that you're putting off, some habits that you want to create or things that you want to do around your home, just do it. And you may even seem that it's easier than what you think. 
So as I was making my bed and doing some laundry, my kids started on their independent work. So I just like to help them out with some things if they need help. Check their work if anything is incorrect and have them fix it. Um, so that's what they're doing right now. Another really helpful thing for us is chores. So after they're done with their work, they are required to do their chores before they can do any electronic stuff. So here's how we have it right now. It's not the best method, but it does work for us. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and this journey with my family. I can't wait for you to see more content and you guys have a great day.